Oh uh oh. Don't be afraid if it's full of oil, it's supposed to be like that. This is too much. This does not fit at all. Now I'll have to freestyle with whatever I can. No ways. Okay. And then I strip the bolt. Ah, it's a bad day in the office. The bolt is stripped. I'm gonna do that and then I'm going to mark it for you so that you can see what I'm doing. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're having another issue. Now we need to change the timing chain. The timing chain is located right here. So when I start the car, this is what I hear. So this is one of the reasons why I'm changing this chain. So I'm just gonna let the engine cool up, then I'm gonna check on the job. So now that you've heard what I hear when I start the car, so that's the reason why I need to change this timing chain. And just like taking the cam follower out, to get to the timing chain as well, we may need to take everything off. We may need to take the intake manifold, then get to this part. We need to also remove the spark plugs, remove the timing cover or the tappet cover, then we're gonna get onto that part. So when doing this job, the engine needs to be on TRC. I'll have to take this cover off, also go down there and set the engine onto TDC. So you might find that the bottom part is not on TDC but here it's on TDC so I might have to spin the crank again until the bottom part of the crank timing mark and the top part of the cams timing mark are line so to remove the timing cover you'll need to take out some three t30 screws so now we have to take this timing cover off just to see the mark now it's really difficult to get it out so one thing i may need to do is to first take this thing out then i can be able to maybe move the breather hose out of the way so now let me take this out so that i can be able to get the cover out So after taking out the air intake manifold, you now have to set the engine on to top that center to align the fourth cylinder lobes to be facing each other. So I'm also going to mark these places like I said so that we can be able to know which one is which one. So right now what I need to do is to remove these coverings and then I'm going to set the engine to top that center. Okay, the cover is off. So this is the day where I did my service, the cam belt service on the 7th, which is July 2023, on 183,600 kilometers. So let me just try to see if I can be able to fit something inside, then I can be able to turn the engine. Let me just try that off camera. Then if it works, then I'm going to show you. But even if it doesn't work, I'll tell you. And what I had to do was to finally take out this fender liner. Then when I took out the fender liner, I was able to expose this part right here. Then got in the truck wrench because for us to change the timing chain, the cylinders have to be on TDC. So cylinder number one is going to be at the top and cylinder number four is going to be at the bottom, but the cam lobes are now going to be at the top. So now if you can see, the Ultimark is in line with this part, which has the indent on it. So you're not going to see it because I already marked it now, but I'm sure this is the part which is has to align with this arrow and the bottom part as well needs to align with the other part of the crankshaft. Now what I need to do is to remove the high pressure fuel pump then I'm gonna come onto the tappet cover gasket so that I can be able to get onto the cam chain and also get the tool that I need to place on here so that the cams cannot move around.
so I was just having a cup of coffee because I was so hungry and it's too cold but it's getting better so now that we've removed the high pressure fuel pump which was located right here we now need to get this tablet cover off so that we can be able to get onto this part which has the timing chain on but before getting that off we'll need to pull off these coils then pull this out then also remove this even when you feel low you can still go even when you feel slow you can still go even when there's no hope you can still go i never answered a no man i still go 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 So now that I've unscrewed everything, what I need to do is now to release this hose. Then I'm going to be able to pull it up. Okay, this hose is now off. Uh oh, it seems broken. This hose is broken. Look at it right here. Damn. These hoses are so brittle. It broke. There's nothing I can do because it broke from this place right here. When I took it off there, it was broken as you can see right here so we also need to get a new hose which is going to sit on there but i'm not going to remove it for now just don't want to risk anything falling off into the engine so yeah you also need to remove this uh, oil cap then after removing the oil cap you can just pull up on the tappet cover then it will come out like this here we go this is how it comes off So here's the inner part of the engine which looks very immaculate for me. Uh, everything looks good. The lobes look very great. So because I've jacked up the engine, I'm not sure if you can see it very well, but the cam lobes are looking at each other to show that these are in top dead center. So that's what you need the pistons to be in. As you can tell, the engine really had good maintenance because this is way too clean for an engine that was not being maintained very well so this looks very good the cams are very very good as you can see there's no scoring in any of these cam lobes there's none at all so clean these are so clean man so you can tell that this engine had really really good maintenance so yeah now what we need to do is to put on the tool uh oh what we need to do is to remove this part first then we're gonna put on the tool later these are always a nightmare for me to take them off. Uh oh. Broke the connector, but it's fine. It's off. So, this is the broken piece. But I don't think that's a big deal. So, you'll need a T20 to remove the solenoid valve. So, just be gentle when you're pulling on it. So, you can use the part where it is screwed on. Just like this. Now it's off. Don't be afraid if it's full of oil, it's supposed to be like that. Here's how it is. So what you'll need to do is to make sure that when you're pulling it up, you make sure that you be, maybe get the screwdriver onto this part so that it don't damage the valve itself. So now we need to take off these screws which are around the edge here. So these screws are a T80. So when you remove this always make sure that you remove it carefully because inside this valve here there's some oil control rings that you don't want to damage so like we did on the other parts just make sure you're careful so what's sticking on is the gasket i'm just trying to make sure that i don't spill all this oil in here And the oil control rings are still there none of them are broken so here it is and there's the timing chain right there so let me just put this aside so 
Here's the gasket. There's a gasket here. You need to remove the gasket. And I recommend that you replace the gasket. You can't keep on using this because these are sensitive parts and you don't want to come back onto this part once you're done with it. So you need to remove the gasket. The gasket is out. Here it is. So here's the timing chain and the timing chain tensioner. There's a lot of slack underneath the timing chain, which I understand that when the car is now moving, there will be less, but there's a lot of slack underneath here. I know that when the car is moving, the oil is going to pressurize this system and it's going to be tight, but this is a lot of play. This is too much. So the timing chain and the tensioner, here they are. So we need to replace these, but before we replace this, we need to get this valve adjuster. So let me try to get the, t the tool in so that we can lock this in position. And then get on. What you need to use for this valve adjuster screw is an M10 ribbed socket. This is not a Torx. Please do not use a Torx. If you use a Torx, you are going to strip the bolt and you are not going to be able to get it out. So your job is going to fail in any way. This is an RM10. So this is a ribbed socket M10. So please be sure to use the right tool for the right job. Before I put on the M10 ripe socket, I need to put on the cam logging tool. So here's the cam logging tool. The cam logging tool goes in here. It needs to go in here and lock the cams from moving. So this one seems like it's giving me some hard time. I don't know why. Let me try to use a different approach. They are not moving, the cams are not getting in position, so let me try to adjust them. I have this tool, maybe they can get in position and this thing can slot right in. <clears throat> the tool is definitely not going in, doesn't fit which is really a problem. So let me just try to see if it can fit here. It doesn't fit as well. It doesn't fit here. It doesn't fit anywhere. I don't know. I just wasted money buying something that I thought would help me, but this does not fit at all. So it's really going to be a difficult job right now because now I'll have to freestyle with whatever I can. So the tool finally worked. I managed to loosen it up then try to adjust those things. Now the tool goes in. But still, I'm not happy with the tool just because of that. But let me just continue with the job anyways. Before you do this, make sure that you put this pin inside so that when the tensioner is off, it doesn't come flying. So you need to put this pin inside. Now the tensioner is, is logged in, as you can see. Look at how the chain stretched. No ways. I don't know what I heard, but I think I heard a bolt. I've heard a bolt strip. Just not sure if I'm right. I think I stripped the bolt. Okay. I didn't strip the bolt. I didn't strip the bolt. I didn't strip it, guys. It's coming off. So what I need to do is now to just get it off. I didn't strip the bolt. It's coming loose. I can feel it. I guess I'm wrong because I'm seeing some metal here. Uh oh, it seems like I did strip it. This is a really bad day in the office because these were not fully loved. Now when they were turning, they were stripping the bolt. As you can see, the bolt is stripped, so there's no way I'm going to be able to get it out now. But the chain needs to be changed. The chain needs to be changed. Ah, it's a bad day in the office.
the bolt is stripped so now because the bolt is stripped i've decided that i'm gonna take off the cam tray because i'll be able to remove the chain without removing the cam adjuster valve so i'll have to take this tray off after taking the tray off then remove the chain here then we'll be good to replace it so i'm just going to remove the last 230 right now so the tensioner is quite loose let's be careful not to damage the aluminium because this is very very soft But one side is loose, no. I need to do this to get the other side loose as well. So I've now managed to take off everything. Now let me try to remove the cam tray. Put this is off. Just need to slide it a bit forward. while lifting it up so okay so this is finally up because there was no choice and there was no way i would be able to get this chain because now i've stripped the bolt so i had to resort to this method this is why i said that the cam locking tool is not really important because they can also do this method because it also works so this is what i resorted to not because i wanted to i wanted to do things right but the tool doesn't work for me so to remove the camshaft you just pull up on it and let me just make sure that this other side of the valve doesn't lift off because there's so much pressure here it does lift off a bit but it's not too terrible let me remove this guy because it doesn't really serve any purpose at all the chain is here so what we need to do right now is just to keep holding this remove the cam remove the intake camshaft the intake camshaft is off just make sure that you don't strip anything then remove the tensioner so the reason why i put this pin on the tensioner is to make sure that when you remove the tensioner the pin this thing doesn't go flying out and fall into the cylinders which is going to give you a really really hard job so now the cam is off the chain is out so this is the new timing chain so if you can look at the new timing chain right here it has this bronze link so from this bronze link you need to count 19 times to your left so you need to count to the 18th and 19th link onto your left so i'm gonna do that and then i'm going to mark it for you so that you can see what i'm doing one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So we need this 18th and 19th link. 18, 19th link. These are the links that we need. So from here, from the bros link, you need to count to the 18th and 19th link. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Just to verify. So now that we've marked these parts here, we also need to mark them on the other side of the chain. Mark this on the other side of the chain. Just like that here the white and we'll mark them here so now the chain has been marked now the chain is ready for install so that's how the chain gets marked now the tensioner is just right here so the tensioner goes straight on the tensioner has no explanations to make for me the tensioner just goes straight on let me just show you as you can see the tensioner doesn't have any complicated things for you to go through it's just held in by three screws right here so here it is then when you put it, you need to pull this pin. So the tensioner just goes straight on like this. This is the tensioner and this is the chain. So here's the intake camshaft. And what I've done is to make sure that I clean up anything that's uh, going to fall off here. So I've cleaned off everything on the intake camshaft. As you can see it, there's no scoring at all that I can see on the intake camshaft. There's no scoring. There's also no scoring where the cam follow rides on. Here's the wall of the camshaft. So if you can look on the intake camshaft, the intake camshaft, there's a bit of a dot right here. 
so this is where the other side of the chain has to go on to this is where the bros link goes on to here's this part and here's the bros link on top of the part that i'm telling you about so if you can see just look at my finger and keep tracking my finger and you can see that this dot right here is where the bros link is sitting on top of i'm not sure if you can see it but that's where the bros link is sitting on top of other parts that we've marked needs to go on this part i'm not sure how i can even record this for you because i have to be holding the can shaft i can't put it down because it will have some debris on it i'll just try to put it on right here the 18th and 19th link will have to go onto the cam variator so i've put back the tensioner because the tensioner just goes straight in it's an in and out thing so i stay next to the highway guys so i'm sorry for the noise that you are hearing so the other part where the chain goes to on the exhaust camshaft is located right here there's a part with a line i'm not sure if you can see it there's this part with the line this is where the 18th and 19th links go into the links that will mark the 18th and 19th can you see this line i'm not sure if you can see it guys because it's, it's really not easy there's a line here oh. It's very awkward man very very awkward there's a line in here i'm trying my best to make you see the line there's a line here just right on this tooth right on this tooth there's a line oh can't see much man i'm really sorry guys i really can't see much but on the exhaust camshaft if you are able to take this one out there's a line which goes on to the variator this is where you're going to put your chain onto the 18th and 19th link. That's where you're going to put them to. And the bros link is going to go right here. Okay, because I can see the line, I'll just put it. Then you guys are going to maybe see it when I'm done putting it on. Guys, it's really, really at the bottom. So I'm sorry that I couldn't be able to film it for you. But I can see the line here. The timing line. I need to put the 18th and 19th link on it. Yes, so we are in the bros link needs to come on top of the timing mark on the intake camshaft. Now the job is just to get the camshaft in. Okay. Mm. Oh shit. Okay, the camshaft is back in. It just needs me to align it a bit. Okay. So yeah, I've injured myself, but I guess if I had a glove on, I would have avoided such. But yeah, it's fine. We're going to carry on. Now that this is on, what I need to do is just to clean up here and just apply new sealant. Now it's the next day, so I've managed to seal up the cam carrier and now I just want to get it in. So I think that's all I needed to do. I've done sealing, although the sealing job is not so perfect, but I guess it, if it works, it's good enough. So I'm just going to put this back in. So when you put back the cam carrier, just make sure that you align the cam carrier with the dowel pins, which are right here. This will then allow you to make a proper installation because if you can align the cam carrier with those dowel pins, then you are good to go. So I'm just going to start with the front one, then close it on the back one. So let me try to get it aligned. Is it aligned?
What? This this one there? The angel. Yes, this is the cylinder. Here. When I'm screwing the bolts, it'll push this because this part is up because the valves are up, so I'm taking this one. So this is the tightening sequence. We'll start here. This is number five. The number six will be the last one. So. Oh, there's six. I thought the outside is three. It's all five. I have now tightened up all the bolts. Uh, what's left is to torque the bolts up to 8 Newton meters plus a 90 degrees turn. What you need to know is that when you put on the cam carrier, you're not going to be able to get it to sit just like I was struggling to put it on to sit right here. So you'll need to start first tightening up the bolts. So you're going to start with the first pattern. You're going to start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then the 6th pattern. So after doing that, you're going to be able to have the chem tray aligned but the best thing you need to do before you can put on the chem tray is to make sure that these dowel pins are aligned so when you tighten it down it's going to sit onto these dowel pins but if you don't do that you're not going to be able to make it to sit that's something you need to be careful on we have now replaced the chain although we didn't want to remove this cam carrier but there was no choice as the tool that we bought could not uh, do the job so this is what we ended up having to do now what i need to do is just to clean up this part just to make sure that i remove any residue of the stripped bolt and i'll also need to release this pin from the tension so right now let me just make sure that everything is clean then i'm gonna put back the cam cover so now the tensioner is off now that the tensioner is off, we can then go ahead. <laughs> yeah, the tensioner is in there very tight. What we need to do is to align this pin, this door right here, with this first part. So this part right here, right here, must align with this door right here. So, and what you need to make sure is that when you're pulling, you're putting this on, you don't damage the oil control rings. There are some oil control rings here. So you need to make sure that you don't damage them. So this must align with this dial right here at the corner. Mm. Now things are aligned. This is inside the bottom of the timing cover, so it's very difficult to get onto them. So now I'm gonna put the cam variator sensor in. So the way it goes is like this. Just slide it in carefully. Work your way down. It's just like this. Then it sits then get its bolts on these bolts are 220 bolts the bolts for the cam variator sensor you just slide them here so it goes in right here i'm not sure if you can see but there it goes so let me just get in the second one the second one goes in just like that so just make sure you slide it back and forth until they sit it shouldn't be a difficult thing to do So this one is now seated and it's going in. So just make sure that you don't tighten the bolt all the way so that if this one is not aligned, you can have at least some adjustability. Now that they are both in, you can then tighten them all the way down. This one is strong. one is also all the way in so you can plug on the sensor with this connector just like that until it clicks it didn't click oh it didn't click because i broke this sensor uh oh i broke this pin on the sensor so that's why it's not click it's not clicking but as long as it's fully seated in there clean up this area before putting on the high pressure fuel pump So 
I've already replaced the pipe which is the same as this one that broke and also got the dipstick replaced there's the broken part of the dipstick so what's left right now is to put on the new timing cover gasket this is the old gasket now I'm just trying to get it off because it was in there very tight So when you're doing this job, always make sure that you replace the timing, the timing cover gasket just to make sure that you don't experience any leaks because this is not the type of job where you want to come back and do it again. Okay. Here's the new one and there's really not getting it wrong anyway. So this is how it goes. Just make sure that you line it up then push it in on these lines, on these grooves. Just push it in so it sits very well. The most important thing that you need to make sure is that the gasket itself does not have oil because if it has oil, it's going to slip on top of the cam carrier and it's going to prevent maximum sealant. So now that this is on, we can go ahead and put it on the cover. So I'm just trying to set it in. Also making sure that nothing is coming off. So this is now on. What I need to do is just to tighten it up. So we're going to also tighten this in a sequence. So we've done now tightening up the tablet cover gasket and the tablet cover. What I need to do right now is to plug in this hose which was broken, then get the intake manifold on. When it clicks, you know it's tight. So this hose right here which goes here is on the intake manifold. So right now let me just take the intake manifold. So now everything is done, so what I'm gonna do is maybe to start up the car and check if everything is okay, then I'm gonna leave it here for now. So let me just start up the car and see if everything is okay, then that will be it for me. So thank you guys so much for watching this video, but before you go, let me just start up the car and see if everything worked. The car fired up right along on the first start, so I guess this is a good thing. Because the car they didn't even stall it at all. So it's running very great. So I guess the job is well done. So I'm happy about that. Because if I can check, I'm not seeing any leaks. I didn't close up this part because I want to check if there's any leaks at all. So as you can see, there's no leaks at all. There's no leaks. So for me, this is a job well done. There's no leaks at all. I can't see any leaks. And the car is running very smoothly. So, I'm happy about the job. Now what I need to do is just to lock everything up and put the cover right here. Then we're going to be good to go. So, yeah, that's it. I'm taking six shots, yeah, straight to the face And I wanna get lost, I'm sick of this place Don't know how to stop when I'm feeling this way So I'm taking six shots till I'm feeling okay